So we've expanded the morning ritual a tad. Got a couple more things I'm doing now. I've really got on top of my gut health. I did that by doing 70 grams of glutamine in a week. That helped a lot, I could tell. And now I just take like five grams in the morning along with a green drink when I'm lazy and I don't feel like making my actual juice. And I brought creatine back into the mix. Nothing too special, just um, five grams a day in the morning. And I'm still taking my super probiotic. Between these two packets, it's 500 billion per packet. So that's one trillion probiotics. This stuff has really, really helped with the gut. If you're lean and your stomach still looks inflated, I would strongly recommend heavily attacking it. It's been helping a lot with my wife as well and our kids. So this is what I have every morning. So meals for today, five whole food meals a day. Uh, we got ground beef here, organic lentils with beets, cauliflower, cauliflower. You know what that is, broccoli. Uh, flank steaks with mushrooms, Brussels sprouts, quinoa mushrooms. So nice, nice little mix. And um, lastly, um, we've got chicken, cauliflower. What am I doing? Chicken, Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes. I don't cook with sodium on my food. The only sodium I get is when I add hot sauce. It's later in the fall now, so it's definitely cooler, cooling down. It's 12 degrees this morning. I gotta take the garbages out, crap. I just remembered. I don't mind when it gets cold. I still do cardio when it gets cool though. Remember, who's the running coach, Mikey, that said uh, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing? Is that your coach? I got all equipped this weekend. I went to the stairs, I did them in three degree weather. All right, we're going all the way across Toronto right now. You guys are gonna meet my secret weapon today. This guy's absolutely brilliant. It takes me literally like an hour and 40 minutes to get here. What we got today is a power day. We're doing an advanced <laughs> accelerated muscle activation day. <laughs> Basically, I'm getting treated all day here today by the number one muscle activation specialist here in Toronto. And uh, if you're in pain, if you have any injuries, if you have lagging body parts, this is where you come. So we're here at Core Activation in Toronto with Eric Seifert. Eric Seifert is a muscle activation specialist and uh, he's a good friend of Ben Pikowski as well and he's treated him and uh, a lot of professional athletes, uh, a lot of elite people at the top of their game come here as well as just uh, everyday people who want to escape pain, who are um, not moving properly, they're not getting um, the results they want from their workouts. So what I found is that this has really helped balance my body out without doing anything differently. My body's just starting to look more balanced, proportional, so. We're treating with a system called MATRX, and Vince has been doing this process for a while now. Um, with me, we've been working through his body, and a uh, developer of this, Greg Roscoff, has uh, deemed that the body's divided up into 43, let's say, different ranges or things that the body can uh, be understood to have mechanical ability. And so in those ranges, we want to we want to isolate muscles that are actually responsible mechanically for those. So uh, we talked about like my chest being more developed than my shoulders. I don't do anything special for my chest. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so am I dumping more tension onto my chest by default because the shoulders aren't activating? Is that is yeah? Could typically, that maybe typically in, in, yeah. In most people's, uh, you see lots of bodybuilders in the bodybuilding community that have. Um, body parts that seem to be very dominant and other parts that seem to be hard to grow we're, they, we're aesthetic athletes right so you're right. looking at aesthetic athletes that can't grow certain areas or we see overtraining in certain areas or or we start seeing overuse injuries look i said hey i've got to put all this volume on to try and spill it into those areas and generally met fits with the bodybuilding community to have this opportunity to look at the body and break it down in terms of is that muscle uh, strong, which is a weird thing to say to strength-based athletes, yeah. but is that muscle capable of contracting in, in that sort of optimal way? And, right. and if we can turn those on, you have a chance to train them, you can include them, and they can right. actually start to grow. Okay, we're done. Let's see how you feel. Oh. <laughs> That's always a good start. That feel a little different? Yeah, it feels really good. I could actually move my shoulders properly. 
my arms are fully extended. So the main reason we came here is for Eric to treat my muscles that aren't activating. As you guys saw, stuff in my wrists, shoulders, arms, not doing their job, pecs, biceps. So who knows where the tension is going when I train those muscle groups. So now, what I asked Eric to do is, this is actually his day off, and we're doing a VIP day for me, where we're spending a day with just him and me. And he's gonna help now optimize my technique and help me pick exercises that help me direct the tension into the muscles I wanna build. Eric, you saw the workouts I sent you? So mm. these are my vanity specialization workouts. We're kind of doing a hybrid of uh, the shoulder, bicep, and tricep workout all at once. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly don't care if we do biceps, triceps, or shoulders first. But um, let's work on shoulders. So full shoulder flexion is upwards versus backwards. So think way up at the top. Shoulder blades have to move. Yeah, there you go. That's better. Okay, otherwise you're trying to move off this joint and I actually need you to get the whole shoulder to move is all three. So shoulder blade, collarbone, and the, your arm, okay? So now I want you to stop at 90 degrees. Okay, now go. Good, so this is out, not down, right? Then in, in, and then out, and then in. Good, so the path of the joint we're paying attention to is this elbow coming in, in, go. In, out of boy, good. Now out to my hands, out and in from my hands. Good, better. Out and in, that was better. <laughs> but you see that temptation to start to wanna squeeze up and down, right? Yeah. Okay, and that temptation when you started to, to rock backwards is you wanting to what? Trying to get some peck into that, yeah, of okay, right? So that's where you start to wanna, Fine stuff. right? Which is really hard why a standing one is better but more challenging, uh -huh. right? If you wanna push more load, you're gonna sit down. Of course. If you maybe wanna like have to challenge a bunch of this stuff and challenge your spine, which is probably gonna get some better shoulder development, then guess what? We're gonna do standing, okay? I don't care how far you move it, you have to keep pushing on that leg. There you go. Keep pushing on it, whole foot, whole foot. Because the whole goal of this exercise is that this is challenging because they're, so now I'm gonna move this so I can go what? Above parallel, right? but get the heaviest place is going to be perpendicular with, right? So now, oh, shoulder, yeah. so now if I hang out here, I can get above, which normally is dropping off and there's some concern. So now I can challenge this. The problem is you're, you can see people do this. So, you just turn so if I say push down on the whole foot, now you start stabilizing. You start holding this here, not just from this hand, but from the leg. And then all of a sudden you actually have to stabilize your spine and then you can go above parallel with, and actually keep it in your shoulder. When you get tired, you wanna make a post here. Use that leg, use that leg, use that leg. There you go. Okay, in and out. Don't let the butt, almost the elbow's gonna point inwards, right? Inwards, outwards. There, good, inwards, outwards, like a little marionette. Good, now, because we have two different elbow flexions here, right, based on the, the surgery you had, so they can't close the same, right? But I want you to try and think full closed, okay? So it's not up and down, the joint moves where? In a circle, right? Towards you, good. Now the biggest thing I'm gonna make you do when you're standing is I want you to use your legs, use your leg, push up through me, there, okay? Because that first move of that dumbbell based on the joint means it goes forward. The invisible freezer bench, keep them on my hands, keep them on my hands, keep them on my hands. Ooh, my hands are here. Keep them on my hands. Keep them on my hands, go. Keep them on my hands, keep them on my hands, keep them on my hands. There, that's a good one. That's better. See, that's the job of your shoulder to help your bicep work harder. Good, much better. Now, if you're following this path, okay, and it's this virtual, can you keep this still? This is the tr tricep preacher. There you go. Slide up underneath, underneath, underneath the skin. Good, better. Good. There, lengthen, slide. Up, 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 up. Good, now you got it. So there's a difference between feeling trashed and you know feeling like you worked hard yeah. versus I feel like I, I got all the stuff I wanted to feel, right? right? I got some shoulders and arms. They're gonna go eat now, then come back for another uh, therapy session, see how everything held up. Maybe get through some more ranges. Yep. Yeah. Give me some more muscles, get into some legs. I'll worry about the legs later. Right now, it's project shoulders and arms. That's all we're worried about. One goal at a time, folks. Keeping it clean, gonna hit the pita spot.
We'll save five guys for another day. Yeah, the challenge I've had with MAT is that it's caused me to use the brake more than the gas pedal. I love that car analogy, right? So prior to MAT, prior to understanding mechanics, I've always been gas pedal, gas pedal, gas pedal, go harder, go harder. If I didn't look as good as I wanted, I gotta go harder, that was my tool. So the challenge is trying to figure out how to push yourself with high quality, right? So when you use the analogy, when you, you use put yourself with high quality. Yeah, so when you use the analogy of, of gas pedal versus brake, you know, what I would use is, is gas pedal. The more gas pedal you want, the better your steering should be, right? So we check how your handling is, because you can push hard, but you have to know how to control. There's nothing wrong with having a fast car, but if it shows up at the end of the race as a steaming wreck, right, then then you're crushed, right? So getting there is part of the problem, right? Working hard, but then staying there is the next step, right? And that's where the quality versus quantity is going to, it's going to serve you. You just have to learn to see where that high level quality is, and then just learn to start to dial it in, dial it in, dial it in. One of the complaints that comes into my inbox is guys complaining about not being happy where they are in life. You know, typically guys in their mid-20s, which is a time in your life where you need to start getting your shit together. Um, if, you're not 20, if you're 25 and you're still screwing around and you don't have clarity on your life, on where you're going, and you're not taking risks and moving in the direction that's gonna set up your future, you really need to step back and see where you're at. So, there's a big disconnect between what they say they want and with the environment they're living in. And I often ask people, like, who's your mentor? I don't have one. Who do you hang out with on the weekends? Guys who are, you know, clubbing it and boozing it up and chasing girls and living a dead-end lifestyle. And then they're wondering why they're not growing, why they're not getting what they want. I don't care if I'm the smallest guy in the room. I don't care if I'm the weakest guy in the room. I don't care if I'm the most unarticulate guy in the room, as long as everyone's better than me, they're going to only help me improve my life, my future, my family's future, and that's, and that's it. So uh, I feel like if you're not where you're at in life, um, fitness, career, relationships, you have to look at your environment. Um, you're the sum of the top five people you hang around the most, there's so much truth to that. And so I'm constantly looking at who's my top five, who's my top five. And uh, I, I feel like that's uh, a lot of value that was uh, laid into my life that uh, I want to lay into yours. So. Well, thank you so much for watching another Day in the Life episode. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode, which is actually going to be filmed at my seminar event this coming weekend. And if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like it and leave me a comment. I love hearing your feedback. And uh, until next time, keep living large, guys inside and outside of the gym. Peace out.